Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 158 of my poker vlog. This one is a very special game, very special session, and we're going to get right into it. So I arrive at the D Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club, gearing up to play a 5-5, $3,000 max buy-in game with the famous Matt Berkey. Unfortunately for me, the RFID table happened to be down, so this is going to be just a standard vlog. Would have loved to have some stream footage for you guys, but I guess we'll have to be on the next one. Sitting with $3,000 on the first hand of note, there's a $20 button straddle. Game started out as 5-5-10 mandatory, and the $20 straddle was on, so going to be played big today. With two limps, I raised to $80 with queen nine of spades. Not a particularly premium hand, but with a bunch of limps and dead money out there, we're going to play this one, especially with position, and it's suited. So $80 is the bet. The button and only one of the limpers call. So we end up going three ways to a flop of 10, 7, 5 with zero spades. Rainbow board, not my favorite. Much better for limp callers than me. They have two pairs. They have sets. Apart from pocket tens, I don't have a whole lot here. So when it checks to me, I'm just going to give up on this one pretty much. But when the button checks it back, the turn is the ace of hearts. I think this opens the door to me pretty obviously. I have all the best aces in range. Ace, king, ace, queen, all play this way. When it's checked to me, I'm going to try to rep one of these hands. No one should have too strong of a holding. So I bet $150 with absolute air. Definitely a bit nerve-wracking, but the button folds and the limper folds. So we begin the session with a win. We are heading in the right direction. Following that, the $10 straddle is on. So I raised to $65 in middle position with King Jack of Hearts. Folds all the way to Matt Berkey, the legend, and he raises to $200. He's in the small blind and he'd been three betting pretty frequently here. So we can't give him too much credit. Definitely the most competent player at the table by far. When it folds to me, we can't really get in the habit of opening and just folding to his frequent three bets. So we're going to defend King Jack of Hearts in position, and the flop is 10-8, deuce, two hearts. Flopping a really good flush draw feels fantastic. Even better, Berkey checks to me. I think my opponents relegate to overs in this spot. I have like 10 jack, 8-9, pocket jacks, pocket nines, and he's pretty much saying he's got ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack when played this way. So I think I'm going to bet here represents some of the smaller pairs, try to get single ace high holdings to fold. When the turn is the three of spades, now sitting here with king high and thinking that I might end with king high, he's checked to me twice. He clearly has an ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack type hand. I don't expect him to have too many traps here. I think an over pair would have bet by now. But I do think I have a ton of equity to realize here. My flush draw should give me the basic nuts. And at least one of my pairs should be live. So if the river's a jack or king, should have the best hand at least some portion of the time. So I check it back. The river is the six of clubs. So we brick, and Berkey checks it to me for a third time. Well, three checks. He doesn't have a whole lot, I don't think. I only have king high. Be amazing to get a bluff through against a legend. That would be awesome. I do think I play pocket jacks and all of my flopped sets the same way, where I bet flop, go for a little pot control on the turn, and then go for my value on the river when, you know, all the draws miss. As well as maybe an ace-10, king-10 type holding. And then my bluffs would be my missed flush draws and then like jack nine, nine, seven at some frequency. But either way, we're going to throw out the bet here. We fire $350 into the middle. Be awesome to get this through. Try to make it a value heavy sizing. But Berkey claiming that he is unbluffable eventually flicks it in. I'm sorry. I'm allergic to bullshit. I just muck. No chance I'm good ever. And he has ace queen off suit. So... He didn't make 4.7 million in tournament earnings by folding to clowns trying to make river bets. Following that, it folds all the way to me on the button. I have ace jack off suit. I raised to $50. Only the $10 straddle's on, so seems like a reasonable sizing. The straddler and the lipper call, so we end up going three ways to a flop of queen eight four rainbow. When it checks to me, I've just been caught bluffing, so... Seems somewhat suicidal to go for one so soon right afterwards. So I check it back. Turn is the king of clubs. Checks to me a second time. Now the bluffing jeans are really trying to kick in. Really wants me to throw out the barrel. But 
Gonna stay disciplined on this one. Any player could have had a queen and checked me because I was the preflop aggressor and then not feel the need to bet when a king shows up. So queen would probably happily check call here. I check it back. River is the five of diamonds. Checks to me a third time. Maybe ace high is good. I check it back. One player announces ace high and I know that ace jack high is gonna be the better one. So I show my hand and we take down a small one. Following that, with just the $10 straddle on, I'm in early position with Queen Jack offsuit. I raise to $40. There is one caller before Berkey three bets again, this time to $125. The big blind calls, and for this price with this much action, can't be full into Berkey's three bets. He's definitely the widest three better at the table by far, mixing it up a decent amount. There's some dead money in there, so I decide to continue for $125. The other player who calls, calls a second time, so we end up going four ways to a flop of Jack, Nine, Deuce, Rainbow. Feels pretty good to flop top pair, good kicker. Berkey might call me down with ace high again. This time I might have it. Seems reasonable. I check it all the way to the pre-flop three better, who is Matt Berkey, and he checks it back. Turn is the three of spades. So when it checks to me, I'm not going to just check here. Going to go for a bet here, some value and some protection for my top pair, because any king, ace... Plenty of cards I'm not going to like to see on the river, so I bet $175. The late position player folds, Matt Berkey folds, and then the final player folds as well. We get to take this one down. Feels great. Picking up some momentum, going in the right direction. Next hand of note. With a button straddle to $20, the big blind decides to call. The $10 straddle folds. I look down at queen 10 of diamonds in early position. I raised to $75 on this one. One later position player calls. And the limper calls as well. So we end up going three ways to a flop of 9-6 deuce rainbow. One diamond. So again, this is not really a board I can bet on. Doesn't connect with my range too often. Much better for my opponents. When it checks to me, I check it back. Pretty standard. When it turns to the jack of hearts, I do pick up open-ended. So that feels pretty good. I could have a jack. They folded to me last time. So why not this time? I bet $225. Going closer to polar, either I have a very good hand or nothing in this case it's a draw which if it completes i can go for like six seven hundred on the river be excellent to the 225 dollars the player to my direct left decides to make the call and the other opponent folds the river is the ten of hearts so we make a pair it could be good i could be against like nine eight seven eight seven six maybe some ace queen ace kings that feel the need to call me down so but this time when I have some showdown value, I check to my opponent, really hoping for a check back. But no, he fires $400. Run, bitch! Run! I don't really expect my opponent to do this with a single jack, and I'm very, very tempted to call. My hand blocks king-queen. Don't really expect him to have that too much, but the obvious backdoor heart's complete. Additionally, this opponent really hadn't thrown out river bets without having it he was very passive he would just check back if he had marginal or weak strength so on this one this is kind of annoying to river showdown value but against this bet and this opponent i think it's just a fold so that's what i do and we will never know if it was right or not next hand of note the 20 dollars straddles on there's one limp i look down at pocket aces in the small blind Definitely raising this one up. I make it $100, 4x plus one for the limper slash being out of position. And for this bet, it is too much. Everyone folds. <laughs> Frustrating. You love to see aces when you're playing a big game. Hate to see zero action. However, very shortly after that, with the $20 straddle on, an early player raises to $75. There's one caller, and I'm in the cutoff with Ace-King off suit. Definitely going to go in for the 3-bet on this one as well. Going to go 4x, same way as I did with Aces. Hopefully get a walk this time, as Ace-King is not as good as Aces. I make it $300. To this bet, the initial Razor decides to call a second time, and the Milpish player that called decides to fold. So we end up going heads up to a flop of Queen-8, Deuce, 2 Diamonds. Queen high boards are pretty much the worst thing you can imagine when you're playing ace king. Ace queen is the main hand you're hoping you're against, and your opponent might be a little bit slow with pocket queens, maybe jacks. Just really not a good board for you. Additionally, with me not even having a single diamond in my hand, I'm not going to see about this one. Again, people are calling me down. I've been caught bluffing. My image is not great. So when my opponent checks to me, I check it back. Turn is the six of diamonds. So flush draw is complete. 
My opponent checks it to me. Well, still don't think I have a whole lot of credibility here. I don't think I have a lot of flush draws that would check the flop. So I decide to check this one back a second time. Hoping to river a pair, but that does not happen. The river is the four of diamonds. I guess I give up. But my opponent checks to me. Well, okay. I mean, I guess I check it back. Any pair is good. But my opponent has ace jack of clubs. So ace king high is going to beat ace jack high. And we scoop in a decent sized pot. Just three betting and checking it down. Very good table. Next hand of note. With an under the gun $10 straddle, I'm the next one to act. I make it $35. With king jack of spades, decent hand you honestly could fold it from under the gun but a lot of these players are playing very loose very wild so we want to get in there a middle position player calls the 35 dollars and then the small blind raises to 125 dollars definitely want to get in there if we call the other player will probably call as well get the play in position to the three better so it seems reasonable i call the 125 the flop comes 10 9 5 with one spade so we flop a gut shot to the nuts straight we flop two overs we flop a backdoor flush draw, feeling decent about our hand at this point. The preflop aggressor continues for $200. Now this seems like a board that he should not be betting on. It's better for both of me and the middle position player's ranges than his. So thinking that he's likely going to slow down if I call, even if I don't end up improving it initially on the turn, likely get to see all five cards, I decide to make the call for $200. The middle position player calls as well, so the pot is building really hoping to pick up some equity any spade queen would be amazing but the turn is the eight of diamonds so we end up picking up open-ended not the worst turn card in the world and that doesn't seem to bother our opponent at all who bets four hundred dollars now at this point i think all options are on the table calling would be fine raising would be very enticing because you have a jack blocker you could easily have queen jack as played but the fact that my opponent bet twice into two people in a board that should never really favor him. I mean, is he saying he has pocket tens? Really weird spot. If this turn card was a spade, I would probably more likely to just get it in there. Be much better. But I eventually, after a longer tank than I think I've ever done, decide to fold this one. Live to fight another day. The middle push player decides to call, so we get to see a river if we would have improved. Hit a jack, queen, king, seven. It is the nine of spades. So we would not have made anything besides king high. I guess it was a decent fold. And on the rest of the hand, the small blind bets $550. And the middle push player tank calls with jack 10. And the small blind shows a single jack and throws the other one away. So guess small blind side to three bet triple barrel with ace jack and uh 10 jack is gonna be the winner side note this hand would have been sick if i turn a queen could get a full triple up honestly if both these players have jacks and they're just gonna keep firing so had an opportunity just did not pan out on this one next interesting hand i'm in early position the ten dollar straddle is on i raise to 35 dollars with ace queen off suit the big blind for $5 decides to call and the $10 straddle decides to call. So we end up going three ways to a flop of queen, seven, deuce, all spades. I don't have a spade in my hand, less than ideal, but we do have top pair, top kicker. The big blind just leads for $100 and it folds to me. Not going to fold top pair, top kicker. Not my favorite board for it, but definitely going to continue. When the turn is the queen of diamonds, my opponent checks to me. Now thinking it's highly unlikely my opponent had a flopped flush, I think flop flushes continue here. They're pretty happy to get paid against trips. My opponent likely did this lead with a single ace of spades, maybe a single pair that just feels the need to bet because they think they can just take it down by leading on a scary board. We've seen this opponent triple barrel with absolute air, so we're going to bet this one. We're going to bet small here, try to get single pairs, maybe pocket tens to call. I bet $150. And my opponent makes the call. Happy to see that. Unhappy to see the 10 of spades on the river. Quite devastating. Quite a terrible run out. And then my opponent bets $150. Well, I'm getting like 7 to 1 on a call. My opponent could still have king, queen, queen, jack. Could have air. Like, I think this just has to be a call. So, beating all the trips, we flick it in there. And my opponent does have queen eight, so we feel okay until the eight is the eight of spades. So another 
huge opportunity to make a bunch of money just does not pan out for me on this one next hand of note and this is definitely the hand of the night for me with a bunch trail to twenty dollars i raised to 60 with ace queen offsuit for a second time this time i'm in very early position the cutoff and the button decide to call so we end up going three ways to a flop of five three three with two spades this time i do have the ace of spades so that's pretty relevant my opponents shouldn't really connect to this board all too often they should never really have a three maybe they have middling pocket pairs but i think there's a ton of misses in my opponent's ranges so we're gonna bet this one i've only showed down good hands for the last hour or so so i think my credibility is back to where it needs to be to fire out a bluff attempt of 100 dollars i think i do this with aces kings queens tens all that stuff but the cutoff decides to call and then the button decides to call as well so not really happy to see us go three ways to the turn card I'm probably going to just have to shut down unless I improve. And I do improve. The turn is the nine of spades. We improved the nut flush draw, nut flush blocker, which is pretty relevant here. Seeing how wide these opponents are playing, I'm definitely going to put in the second barrel. I think this bet wins a lot of the time. Gets hands like sixes, sevens, eights to fold, maybe five, six, maybe four deuce. Plenty of hands my opponents can have that will fold to the second barrel. So I load up the clip and fire $450 into the middle and my opponent snap jams. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. That's cool. Okay, dealer, how much is it? Let's let's figure this out. The total is $1,335. So a little bit close to $800 to call. Start doing some math here. Think about the chances that I'm actually dead against like pocket fives, maybe five three. But the hands that I'm more concerned about are just like ace three and like six seven of spades. And against those hands, I'm drawing very, very thin. If my opponent has like six seven of spades, then I only have seven outs. Not very good, 14%. My opponent has, let's just say, three four off suit, then the four would be dead as well, leave me only eight outs, 16%. So I don't really think I'm getting the right price here to be able to continue. I think it'd be quite a punt to call here. So after a very long agonizing tank, I eventually let it go. And my opponent decides to show the three of diamonds, which is irritating because he's the cutoff and he called a $60 race with a three. What's more irritating is the card behind it was the eight of hearts. So it's not possible. Not probable. Just call 60 pre with 3-8 off and uh, get a dream flop, I guess. Seems nice. A final hand of note. With the $20 straddle on, I'm in early position with Ace Jack of Hearts. I raised to $65. The big blind, the $10 straddle, and the $20 straddle all come along. So we go four ways to a flop of 10-6-7 with one heart. On this flop, the opponent I've been battling with the last few hands leads for 125 we seem to do this with top pair with the queen eight hand. So we're probably going to just call here. Hope to hit one of our back doors. Eight, nine for a straight queen king for a straight draw or a heart for a flush draw. So plenty of playability here. We have position. We're going to call the 125. The big blind decides to call. And on the turn, we bink the jack of clubs. So we're pretty confident we have the best hand here, at least against the player who led. Big blind checks, flop aggressor checks. I'm going to check this one back, try to get closer to showdown, go for some value on the river. Don't really want to get blown off my hand with a goofy check raise because this guy might do it. Who knows? On the river, my opponent down bets his flop bet to $100 with extreme confidence that we have the best hand. We raise to $400 as got to get some back, got to hopefully make this a little bit more manageable. And when the big blind falls, my opponent calls pretty quickly. And ace jack is good. My opponent shows a 10 and throws it away. So we did get some back. The table broke shortly after that as players wanted to max late reg a tournament that was running. Kind of irritating. Would have liked to play with Matt Berkey a little bit longer. As well as the fun players at this table. But we are into the game for $4,000. Out of the game for 29 10 Which is a loss of 
$1,090 across two and a half hours equates to $436 an hour or 21 big blinds an hour going the other direction. From the Bink graphic on stream, you can see that I'm continuing to trend in the wrong direction. There are some spots where I wish I would have ran better in, missed several open-ended draws, Got a few bluffs through, got called in a few bluffs. It's going to happen in poker, but really the ace-queen on 5-3-3. I think the second barrel takes it down a lot of the time, and when it doesn't, I get to see the river card with a ton of equity. This is one of the few times where my opponent somehow wakes up with a 3. Very disappointing to have that result, but we're actually doing relatively fine in the actual bankroll, as a lot of the sessions that I don't actually film are nice winning sessions. And yes, this has a lot of I have a girlfriend living in Canada vibes, but it is what it is. I will see you on the next one.